One item of correspondence for this evening, a letter from the code enforcement officer regarding the Moskowitz McMullen property. Uh, first, we'll deal with the minutes. Are there any corrections or additions to the July 17th minutes? I just want to be recognized to let you know that the, the regular minute secretary has back problems, will not be attending the meeting tonight, so I'll be responsible for that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any corrections or additions? Move to accept. Move to accept. Second. Are you second? The bath second. All in favor? The first item on the agenda is a consent agenda item, the Elliott Private Access Way Resource Protection Permit Extension. Don Elliott is requesting an extension of, a one, uh, of one year for the resource protection permit granted on August 15, 2006 for a lot located at 43 Hannaford Cove Road, Section 19-8-3, Resource Protection Permit. I need to remind everybody that if anyone wants to have a substantive discussion, then we need to table this. If not, do we have a motion to consider? Theodore, uh, that based on plans and materials previously proved and the request submitted, the application of Don Elliott for a one-year extension of the Resource protection permit granted for the lot located at 43 Hannaford Cove Road to build a private access way be granted. Second. Second. I need to be recognized on this as well. Um, Mr. Egan submitted a letter to the planning board for tonight's meeting regarding this oh, item. We don't have that in here then. You don't have it in here because it was just dropped off at the office this afternoon and the copies are still upstairs. The, the, the gist of that is that he has no objection to the extension as long as there are no changes to the originally approved plans. And he's been notified that no changes are proposed and if they were requested that there would be another notice sent out and a new meeting would be held. Would you please um, make that part of the minutes for this evening? Yes. Your addition, thank you. Okay. Um, we have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Second. I second. Jack, Jack, I second. second. And all in favor? Thank you. We have another consent agenda item, Thompson Road Private Access Way Amendments. Kenneth Ray would like to request an amendment of the previously approved plan that reduces the size of Lot 2 and conveys land to the abutting property owners, Section 19-7-9, Private Access Ways. Again, if anybody wants to have a discussion about it, we need to table it. If not, do we have a motion for the board to consider? Motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials approved and submitted and the facts presented, the application of Kenneth Ray for an amendment to the previously approved private access way permit for Thompson Road to reduce the size of lot two and convey land to abutters be approved. Second. 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 Okay, all in favor? Old Business, uh, Crescent Beach Retirement and Assisted Living Community. Would you please come to the podium and please tell us about any uh, changes to the project. Thank you. I was thinking of that conversation. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Chris DiMatteo with uh, Sebago Technics. Uh, good evening. I'm giving you uh, some patience tonight. I'm, unfortunately, I'm a little under the weather, so my voice is kind of in and out. But, uh, I'm here on behalf of uh, Canyon Creek. I have um, uh, 
review the the uh, changes that that uh, we took place. Essentially, I, I summarized them in the cover letter. I think that the three main uh, changes to the site <clears throat> was. Uh, I don't know if you have the numbers in front of you, but number five, where we talked about uh, essentially the change in grades, we actually, uh, with, with adding a curb here, it, it makes uh, better sense to actually pull in uh, and convey the drainage away from the building using uh, field inlets. So we have a pipe coming out this way, heading out to the south end of the building and daylighting out in this vicinity here. So that's a, a, one of the larger changes. Um, the another larger uh, change, item 12, where we discuss about moving, relocating um, the propane tanks that were originally consolidated to the east of the building, now are consolidated down to the south of the building. And I think we, uh, we saw that on the, I pointed that out on the uh, site walk, and we plan to um, include with Bollard's uh, planting uh, screen as well. Uh, so it should be screened. And then the last real big item is essentially the, the, the main entrance has kind of been, uh, changed uh, here. Uh, we had thought that we were going to be able to uh, maintain and preserve that tree out front. But uh, after taking a look at it, it, it's a better option to to actually redesign, uh, which is on those plans, revised plans, redesign that entryway, which actually takes advantage of the space with a cost, kind of a small seating area for residents and um, uh, visitors alike. Um, I believe we addressed all those items from uh, July 11th review, and with regard to the um, most recent comments, uh, we have uh, no issues with them. We've also we've gone already to uh, talk to uh, the electrical engineer with regard to uh, the foot candles, and that doesn't seem to be an issue. We're just going to pull those uh, lights back a, a bit, and um, so we wouldn't exceed that uh, half foot candle at the uh, property line. Um, like, uh, Take any questions? Before we entertain questions from the board, uh, we are scheduled for a public hearing this evening, so I'm going to call the public hearing to order, and if anybody would like to speak about this project, please come to the podium and state your name and address and whatever you want like to say. Seeing no one who wants to, oh, I'm sorry. Oh. I'm Norman Whitaker. I live at, my house is at 132 Scott Dyer Road, which is right next, across the brook from uh, the, uh, the nursing home. And the first question that I have is, Will it have any effect on the distance of the building to the brook? Uh, no. It will not move any closer to the brook? The building, no. All right. This is uh, the brook here. I yes. believe you own this property here. That's correct. Yeah. And this building is actually being maintained, and the, the, this is the building that's being rebuilt. So uh, there will be no change in the distance. In, in the distance, and uh, will there be any change in the uh, the screening, the trees, and the vegetation between I, that property and our property? Um, I think the only area that uh, we're talking about, which is actually in the right of way here, is up in this area for sight distance coming out of this entrance. Otherwise, all this is going to be remain preserved. If you, if you would like to say anything, you need to come up and identify yourself. Sorry. It's okay. Forget you 
Thank you for doing these things between us. <laughs> but we, there's, there's not going to be you introduce yourself to you, you have to address it. Oh, excuse me. Eleanor Whitaker. Thank you. <laughs> Noreen's wife. Uh, there's not going to be a lot of parking that's going to go over on this side. There's then. no parking here, actually. We're just maintaining. We're actually not adding any pavement, except we are adding a walkway that's going to go from here to here along this side of the building. But not. we're not going to be removing any vegetation except for lawn to do that. So this buffer here remains intact. Okay, good. But the, the, it was important to kind of create more of a circulation for residents uh, to go around the building. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. And my, the other question is, has the board considered the problems that this company has had in California in reviewing their plans and their proposed operations? I think what this board does is we determine whether or not a property meets our code. Uh, we don't make any assumptions. If they have the financial capability and we have had guarantees that they do, uh, then we have nothing that we can really say about what has happened in California. Does anybody disagree with that? with me, we need to deal with our zoning code in our town, and that's all we can do. That's what we have the right to do. I see. So, but you, you've let's hope they do it right in this town. Oh, okay. That, that's one thing we can hope. Yes. The board, someone is watching. Yes. I, thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to speak to this project? If not, we'll close the hearing. If you come back to the podium, we'll open up for questions from the board. Are you able to cut back on the number of propane tanks? <clears throat> At this point, uh, we haven't gotten to that point in terms of what the exact um, load is going to be, but uh, we know that we don't want to go more than that, and um, we have an open dialogue with the folks, uh, the propane folks who are kind of working with us to kind of see if maybe bigger tanks might be better than, than fewer, you know, 1,000. Okay. Is the number six or seven? Because that is not clear. Uh, it's seven. Okay. Yes. It was seven on the plans, and it was six in I apologize some that. of the. It was originally, yeah, the, originally the, the site had three and four, and so it was a total of seven, so we're not really going past that either, so. We need to talk about the parking, too, I think. I guess you're too short. We're talking about having two spaces considered to be shared spaces so as to meet the requirements? That's correct. And you would prefer that as opposed to having some small car spaces? I, I believe so. I think it's um, it always, often when you have those smaller spaces, it's, it's moving cars in and out. It's often becomes a liability or detrimental to, and I don't think we can make up that many. I think it would have to be quite a bit that would be reduced to size. How, does anybody on the board have any, any question? You gave us quite an extensive traffic study and other examples. Does anybody have any question about having two shared parking spaces in order to, prior to this development, I never noticed, and I was there a lot, unfortunately, that the parking was, it was usually half empty. Mm -hmm. so maybe nursing homes don't, and assisted living in elder, uh, independent living don't require as many spaces, but if anybody has any questions about it at all. No. Okay. And you said you were taking care of the, the lighting levels. That's correct. Those, uh, those lights will just move back away from the property line. <clears throat> Does anybody have any other questions? Most of them seem to have been answered in the package.
You've seen the town of August 13th, correct? I think you mentioned that. Yes. Your initial and we concur with uh, those comments and um, with regard to the revised lighting plan, that's fine as well. We'll be able to submit that. Nothing else? We have a motion for the board to consider. I've okay. got a motion for the board to consider. Uh, initial, uh, findings of fact, one, that Canyon Creek Development LLC is requesting site plan, site plan review of an elder care facility composed of 55 assisted living beds and 40 elder care apartments located at the former Viking nursing home at 126 Scott Dyer Road, which requires review under section 19.9 site plan regulations. Two, the town engineer has identified design issues that should be addressed to assure implementation of the proposed plan. Three, two spaces may be counted as shared spaces between the guest spaces allotted for the assisted living wing and two spaces for the elder care apartment wing. Four, lighting levels at the two entrance entrances should not exceed 0 0.5 foot candles at the property line. Five, the application substantially complies with section 19.9 site plan regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Canyon Creek LLC for site plan review of the Crescent Beach Retirement and Assisted Living Community, including 55 assisted living beds and 40 elder care apartments located at 126 Scott Dyer Road be approved, subject to the following conditions. One, the plans be revised for the town engineer's comments dated August 13th of 07. Two, that the applicant submit a revised lighting plan for the two entrances that limits the amount of light at the property, limit, the property line to uh, 0 0.5 foot candles or less. Three, that there be no alteration of the site nor issuance of a building permit until the above conditions, above conditions have been met. All in favor? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And please heed comments that will all be done properly. Pass on, it needs to be run very well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on our agenda um, the Moskowitz McMullen property. And the applicants have asked, requested, uh, this is requesting an after-the-fact resource protection permit to fill 4,191 square feet of wetland and pond for landscaping. The application will be reviewed for completeness with section 19-8-3 resource protection permit. Uh, the applicants have requested that this mitigation plan. Do we have a motion for the board to consider? Madam Chair, I have a motion for the board. Uh, consider the motion that it be ordered based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented that the application of Diane Naskowitz and Scott McMullen for an after the fact resource protection permit to fill 4,191 square feet of wetland and pond for landscaping. Located at 221 Pickett Street, be tabled to the regular September 18, 2007 planning board meeting, at which time a public hearing shall be held. Sir. All in favor? Thank you. Uh, next application, uh, Jonesy's Convenience Store Site Plan. Good evening, Madam Chairman, members of the board. My name is Ron St. Pierre. I'm here representing Jonesy's. We've been here before. We hope that we have made uh, changes enough to the plan and added additional information so that you will take and see fit to uh, okay the plan for site plan review at your next session. 
Uh, if we go down, I have to remove these to read, excuse me. If we go down the uh, list of requirements for acceptance of the site plan, uh, as prepared by, I assume, your, either your engineer or uh, Maureen, your, your town planner, evidence of right and title we've complied with, a key map we've complied with, name and address of the owner, applicant, and the butters we've complied with, lot line dimensions, location of existing building structures, streets, easements, driveway, entrances and exits, proposed buildings and structures and road, driveways, parking areas, building setback, sideline, rear yard distances, existing physical features on site within 200 feet of the site, topography of the existing and proposed contours at five foot intervals, parking, loading, unloading area locations, roads, curb, bumper, sidewalk details, section and dimensions. Uh, we requested a waiver on the stormwater system and uh, granted that uh, we checked, uh, that's, a, that's, we're not changing the elevation, so he uh, recommended that. Location, design of sanitary waste disposal system. Location design of potable water supply. Location design of method of solid waste storage and disposal. Landscaping buffering plan. Lighting location. Uh, wattage foot candle radius. Sign locations, dimension, and technical and financial capability. You did a nice job of covering all the areas and working well with Maureen, so thank you very much. I appreciate Maureen's help. She was a big help. She is excellent. Uh, we need to first consider the item of completeness, and then we'll ask you questions further than completeness, which we'll deal with the next time right. when you come back again. Do we have a motion for completeness, please? Like you said, I'd like to ask a question first. Can we do that? Sure. If it has to do with completeness. Yeah. Uh, I just want to ask if you, if you reviewed the letter, uh, August 13th letter from Stephen Hardy. Yes. There's a couple of minor things to it. I want to see whether you had um, addressed, as far as completeness goes, um, site distances uh, have been inadvertently removed from the current city drawing. That's number seven, Stephen Harding's letter. Yeah, they were, on, they were on a previous plan on this printing. They, they didn't show, but they, they have been verified and they were on a previous plan. We will put them on the plan that we present to you next time. Okay. So, can we just go through these other things here? Um, number eight, the note should be added to the plans defining which curb to remove, which is proposed. Yeah, there are a couple of the symbols on the landscape plan that actually end up in the vegetation. We'll just slide those aside. The key is, is there for them. Uh, number eight, the vegetation notes and any necessary erosion control elements to be added to the plans. We, we can put a, an erosion control plan. We won't be causing any erosion to amount to, but we will, you know, put an erosion control, which will basically be a silt fence around the exterior of the property while we're building. Okay. Number 10, the gable right elevation on drawing A3 does not show the wall pack light on the storage addition, which is shown on L1. Have you looked at that? Gable right addition A3. The one that shows the lighting. Candles.
Um, I think it's the, on that storage addition on the back. I have three lights listed on that storage addition on the back. One. Well, if you look at C3, those, light, those lights are not on C3? that storage addition. Yeah. The That's lights that are on L1 on the storage addition. Um, I suggest we should be on C3 as well. He has included a light that I had not in his lighting plan. That's right. what he has done. Right. So, so you'll, we'll, add, you'll add that in then? I'll, I'll put that on the building. So okay. what he did, in, you know, he added a light. Now, if we go, uh, there are a couple of places where the um, foot candles exceed your point right. 05. And basically that's on this back easterly side here in a couple of places just as it hits this line uh, across here and then on this side. But what he did, and I'll explain this, and we can always change this. This is a 70 watt light uh -huh. wall pack, which is downcast. And he anticipated this four foot retaining wall that runs along that side. Uh -huh. And if you see, once you get past the retaining wall, all of the levels drop be below 0.05. In front of the retaining wall, which is the lower end, they they run down at plus three, plus four, plus five around there. But up above, since that wall light is casting down mm -hmm. above the retaining wall, all the levels are mm -hmm. below the 0.05. Right. Number 11, it... Uh, the detail plan shows the segment of the wall, and that's just an oversight, and that'll be deleted from the, it's a typical uh, detail plan. And so that'll be deleted from the plan, because there is no retaining wall going in. Okay. And he's asking the details should be added for the proposed catch basin. Yeah, he, he just wants to see a riprap detail yep. for the, yep. where the outflow is going right. to go. And we changed that to meet their criteria, actually their suggestion. We were going to leave that alone, but their suggestion uh, from the last set of notes was that we should possibly put a small catch basin in there at the lowest point and uh, direct the outflow to the existing ditch with a riprap around it, and we'll do that. Okay, okay good. Anybody else? We have a motion then for the board to consider, and then we can ask some more questions in terms of. Um, I have a motion for the board to consider. Uh, yeah. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Greg Jones for site plan review to convert the existing gas slash service station located at 298 Ocean House Road to a gas station slash convenience store be deemed complete. We had further ordered that the application, come on, let's put in the completeness, okay. I'll, um, I'll second the second motion. All in favor? Okay. Uh, be it further ordered that the application be tabled to the regular. Do you want to table it before you have your discussion? I'm sorry. Go ahead with the discussion. Um, now we can talk about some things beyond the level of completeness. Mm -hmm. uh, do people have questions that they would like to ask? Uh, on the curb cuts, it, it there the information we have indicates that you've got a 
uh, an overly or ex exceedingly wide southern cur curb cut, the south curb cut? The south curb cut right now is 39 feet. Right. And I guess uh, typical town center 24 to 28, and the previous discussion indicated that was for the tanker so he could pull in. But I guess he does, from what I understand, that the tanker only uses the northern curb. Uh, uh, he, curb you know, he has the option, depending upon who's driving, as to which, which exit they use or entrance they use. Uh, the other thing that in laying out uh, turning radiuses on this, uh, we shortened that up by three feet uh, to get to 36 feet. And what that does is that eliminates... By, if we were to, let's hypothetically say that we were to take, this is the existing, you see on the existing proposed plan, the new island, the new grass island overlays the existing island. Mm -hmm. If you were to hypothetically move that this way, then what you are creating and moving this anymore this way, you're creating an S-turn for vehicles. I was standing there tonight and I saw somebody come in with a camper trailer. And for a camper trailer to come in here, he was coming down this way and he actually made it in pretty well. If you were to tighten this up any, then you would be creating basically an S-turn, almost a switchback. That's the only, you know, for convenience sake because of the islands and for safety. Uh, and the fact that once in a while that tanker is going to come in here and exit out here, or he's going to come in here and exit out here. Uh, 36 feet would be what would be recommended for the tanker and also for the safety factor of cars entering and so forth and the ease of entrance and um, accessibility. I do know that, as Maureen has pointed out to me, that in the future they're looking at doing something with this intersection, but it's not all etched in stone right now. And so at that point, uh, I would think that the state would be actually somewhat dictating where the entrances go at that time. Mr. St. Pierre, this is the point. They're doing it now. Okay. And, and what they're saying is we need to look at that curb cut. And I've been at meetings where they know that Mr. Jones is working on, you know, making changes to his intersection. A suggestion was made that he put his project on hold until the changes have been designed. And I have suggested instead of making Mr. Jones wait to perhaps take the bull by the horns and go in there now and, and reduce that curb cut as much as possible so that the state doesn't come back in later and, and tell you you have to change it. So, but, but the time is now. I mean, they're, they're up there today designing that intersection. And every single conversation is that that curb cut is a real challenge. So any effort that can be made now to reduce it as much as possible is what I think needs to happen or it's, it, you know, it's not like we're going to be waiting two years for it happens. They're, they're designing it now. Okay. Is it possible for um, there to be a discussion between the applicant and the state there, to there. make this process easier and, and for you to have them tell you what they want to do? The, the challenge is that the, the town council has created a committee called the Road Safety Working Group. And it includes uh, count, town councilors and, and a couple of members of the public. I'm on it, the police chief, the public works director, the town manager is on it. And that group has been working very hard to try to get the main department of transportation to the point where we can have a meeting with the general public, including the neighbors, to talk about the design. So I, that group is very adamant that they don't want the intersection designed in Augusta. They want it designed in Cape Elizabeth. Um, but any discussion is going to include a real significant effort on that curb cut. And I, I guess I can't emphasize enough that okay. you know, the applicant needs to really make an effort to do everything possible, a heroic effort, in fact. Am, am, to, I, am I to understand that based on your letter here, if that curb cut could be moved to the northerly side 
four shrunk to 28 feet, that that would? 28 feet seems, seems to me to be pretty much the minimum you could live with, I think. I, like I said, I think the applicant should be, you know, taking, taking the leadership in this, really making an aggressive effort to do whatever possible to move that curb cut away from the intersection. I mean, if it was, you know, if you needed to make this, the, the northerly one wider even, it's that, it's that southerly curb cut and how close it is to the intersection that's really a challenge. And if you had already done, if you had already made a heroic effort, how could anyone else come in and change it again? Uh, but, you know, the time is now. Okay, uh, speaking on. The, the islands can't be moved, though. The gas islands are critical. Oh, I'm not talking about the gas island. I'm talking about the island that separates the two curb cuts. But that's, that's what's dictating how the cars need to come in. Right, I, but I'm and, just saying, I, I've and, talked and, and to. I'm worried, as, as yeah. Ron explained, we're going to get into a having the cars come down here and then switch back to get... I, I'm not saying that... I don't understand I'm what just the saying, options are for. What I'm saying is, you know, right now you've got 36 feet, and the major reason you've given for 36 feet is that the tanker truck has to move in there. And, you know, I'm getting a lot of information. That there's really going to be a lot of focus on that. And then I hear that the tanker truck doesn't even use it. And I'm even hearing from someone who drops deliveries every weekend that even with the new configuration, he wouldn't use the, the southerly curb cut because you'd have to get through the canopy and as long as there's one person sitting there filling their car up with gas, it's just easier for a delivery to use the northerly curb cut and you swing in and then you back out later, which is what they're doing now. So if you're saying that you need to keep the southerly curb cut where it is and the width it is for the tanker, that's not passing the straight face test. No, and I'm not. But if it's for cars, my guess is that for cars, you still have some opportunity to move it away from the intersection. I'm not asking you to make people do figure eights when they're trying to get their gas, mm -hmm. but um, I, I really, you know, I think there needs to be some effort made to show that this is the minimum that you need to, that you need to make it work. And, and I, I'm just going to stop now because it's the planning board's call. Speaking for Mr. Jones, myself, we'll sit down and we'll be as diligent as we can about moving that away from the intersection and seeing how close we can come to narrowing that up so it meets your expectations of between the 24 and 28 foot without impeding traffic and creating uh, an inconvenience because basically he's going to be in the convenience business. Uh, an inconvenience and a safety factor, like I said, with campers coming in. When you start bringing campers in and making them do stuff like this, but we'll look at how far we can because this is this is the curb cut that you really want to extend. You're not really concerned about moving this one way or the other. It no, is this. It, it's getting it's getting it away from the intersection. Right, and we will look at that over the next week and present you, you know, what we can do. That at yeah, I, th I just, you know, I, th I think you want to try to take the lead on this and then when a public meeting happens and there's a design, you've already done all your homework and you can say, we've done the best we can and we showed it to the planning board, the planning board agreed this was the best we can do, and, you know, because it is happening some, now. Any reasonable uh, reassurance that the state a couple of years from now wouldn't, wouldn't change it again? There's no reassurance, but I, but I can tell you that um, there, are, there are people in town right now who are very, very adamant that this needs to be designed within the context of Cape Elizabeth. Yeah, and those so, meetings you spoke about haven't begun yet, right? No, we've been trying to hold one. Um, we've, we've been delayed, quite frankly. MDOT is behind. Okay, Bob Malley mentioned it to me right. many months and, ago, and you know, there's, I'd be interested there's, in attending that. It's a real commitment, and we, we know that this is a challenge, and okay. we know that we need to do something that, makes, that still makes your business work. But, you know, if you get out ahead of it, say, this is what, this, we did all the homework already, this is the best it can be, then we can move on to the next part of the intersection. Oh, it, it, is, it, well, sure. it is wholly our intent to comply with, you know, the board's wishes and, and do whatever we can to make that happen. Thanks for that. What was that? They... <laughs> 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 Step back within a week. And, uh, I 
addresses your concerns there. I think there's some, de some design requirements concerned too. Uh, mm -hmm. Standard in the town center design requirements was, uh, quote, the first floor front facade shall be constructed with an equal proportion of opening to wall space. Um, Do you want to flip back to that front design? So yeah, front, front elevation. Right now, we have, and, and I, I, Maureen mentioned this to me, and what we are looking for is a couple of things in, in this. We have, we originally were going to do this in vinyl, and, and Maureen suggested we do it in wood clapboard, and we changed our plan to do that. Thank you. Uh, That's great. What we have here, if you look at the floor plan, we have restrooms right here. And we have a cooler right here, basically. Uh, we're somewhat limited. Now, I was looking at the uh, Cumberland Farms store across the street, and they've got several double hung windows blacked out with paint. Right. That aren't, they're just windows over there for the facade look, not necessarily for the functionality of it. Right. Uh, and in looking at Greg's store tonight, what I saw is he has three bays, and basically that middle bay is going to be the middle of his store. So that's approximately 10 feet by 10 feet. And so there's 100 feet of glass that we're going to have in the middle of the store. I'm going to redesign this to meet that 100 feet in the middle. And then he has two 10-foot bays on each side. And what I will do is redo those so that they are at... Uh, approximately six and a half feet. That'll be a hundred. That'll be another 130 feet. So that will be 230 feet out of approximately 800 to 850 that we have on the front facade. Now, in looking at that tonight, and looking at so could you, is, the, the windows are right now how high? These windows here are four feet high right now. You're going to change them to six and a half feet. I'm going to change them to six and a half feet. Okay. The reason we start those windows at here, if you look at Cumberland Farms, their windows start at the floor, but then they've got them mullioned out. They've got uh, actually spandrel panels in the bottom so you can't see in the store, and there's a reason for that. Right. But very few people like to see the blood and guts in the back of a display. So <laughs> we try to keep this wall height at about three and a half feet so we can have shelving against it and gain retail space and people still have good visibility. So I will do that. And we, we need room to put freshies on one side. And uh, Greg has asked me, and I've, I've got to look at doing Jonesies. He'd like to maintain the Jonesies logo on the other side. So what, what I'm looking at now to try to help comply is I was looking at a couple similar to Cumberland Farms, a couple of double hung windows on each side of the signage. And, you know, to take and try to comply with what we have. Uh, and in doing that, I can gain approximately another 160 to 200 feet. And that would put us at 470 thereabouts of the 580 and still maintain uh, the integrity of the building that we're trying to present to the town and to the public, uh, which is a building that has colonial characteristic, which you'd like to have in the downtown area. Uh, and so by putting these windows here, these windows would be uh, a filmed out window. I, I wouldn't paint them black because it doesn't go but what I might do is just a, a mirror type film so that when, you, when you're passing by or you see them, you see at least a reflection coming out of them rather than something, if that would be. Yeah, in fact, they don't really even have to be true double hung windows. It could be a faux mullion window. Um, if you drive by the Oak Ridge plant on Forest Ave in Portland, they have, the whole front facade is filled with mullion, with, with faux windows rather. I'm not sure any of those are mullion, but you can, yeah, well, we could make those, we could bring those down so that they mirror the windows that we're using in here and make them roughly six and a half by four, mm -hmm. something of that nature, mm -hmm. a 
across so that, you know, and then put the faux film behind them so that you would have the appearance of a window, but you wouldn't have that blackout space, which would just yeah. detract from this type of a building, yeah. at least by having uh, a mirrored type image of, of sorts. You would have some sense of, you know, view through that window, even though what you're seeing is yourself. Right. I think that would help the front facade. Yeah. Right now, it's, it's sort of got a warehousey look on yeah. each side. And that would at least. So we, we can do that, and, and and like I said, we'd like to you know we'll look at the Jonesies in between, and then kind of picture frame the Jonesies and the right. Freshies with those windows on each side. Right. Okay. And I said, yeah, like I like the continuity of the Jonesies name too. I think that's right. important just for the. Right, side. because he's been a part of the community for a long time, and everybody that goes by there, it's Jonesies. Yep. And we want to main, even though his franchise is on the run of Freshies, it's still going to be Greg Jones' place. So we'd like to take and do something in script like he has there in, in an LED light, not a neon, but a, you know, a backlit LED that would, wouldn't be too overpowering, but, could, you know. Okay. Uh, That'll balance it well, too, particularly with mm -hmm. the windows. That's great. What is Freshies? Is that another trade? Freshies is a food program similar to a, a, a subway program. Uh, what it is, it's a proprietary food program uh, owned by uh, Greg's dealer, which is R.H. Foster out of Bangor. And the program itself is a sandwich, salad, pizza program, all fresh, um, somewhat upscale in as far as their appearance and their product. So it's independent of on the run? Big pardon? It's independent of on the independent run. Independent of on the run. On the run uh, will be the interior graphics, will be on the run graphics. Uh, the on the run program has Bengal Traders Coffee. It is proprietary to on the run. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some food aspects of this that are not only part of Freshies, but part of On the Run. The fresh food aspect is the Freshies, the salads, the sandwiches, okay. the dessert. The On the Run would be like the grilled hot dog thing, the taquitas in the morning. But uh, there'll be fresh baked donuts in the store every day by Freshies. Other questions? I, I have one question, and that is that the landscaping seems to be a bit minimal. Um, uh, there's, there's not a whole lot of opportunity because of the way this building is set today. You have gas islands here. You have a tanker pad here where the tanker comes in and drops off gas. Uh, this gas island sets in such proximity to the building that we really have no opportunity to do anything right here. And we can't really do anything right here because the cars are going to have to make that arcing turn to come out of there. The opportunity for us is to do some plantings. Uh, when I was by Greg's tonight, I noticed he has some potted plants out front between his uh, supports for his uh, overhead doors. What we, what we do is plant this area here with some Bar Harbor junipers. You don't want anything that's high growing because then it kills your signage and your facade and whatever. But Bar Harbor junipers and then some seasonal uh, plants. Uh, Maureen suggested and something we might do is maybe space these such that we can stick a couple of like park benches in there just to create kind of a, a park atmosphere. Uh, out front, and we'll have to get permission from the town to do this, all this landscaping out front is on town property. It's not even on Greg's property. Uh, but we're, you know, we're, we're complying with the sidewalk, even though it comes from nowhere, it goes nowhere. It's the only sidewalk on that side of the street presently. But we'll put that five-foot sidewalk in and plant three trees which are similar to the trees that you have uh, between your road and sidewalk on the opposite side of the road, and then do some other flowering plants for summertime and 
Um, basically, like I said, a bar harbor juniper because you want to be able to see out and across. The one thing about convenience stores is you feel the vision. It's, a, it's kind of a safety issue. This down here, we're not changing at all. We are, this back here is just all trees. I've walked that, that's, that's a complete buffer of trees that we're not going to disturb at all. And you have a complete buffer of trees right here pretty much that we're not going to disturb. We are increasing the grass along this side. Uh, we could do a couple of plantings in here that uh, the only problem is Greg plows snow and I'm sure that those plantings wouldn't last much more than a year right I'm concerned here. concerned about the front, but what's in that patch to the left, the southern patch? This one? Yeah. I Nothing. Nothing at this point, because Greg's property line is right here, and this is a dropped-off ditch. If you check the contours on this thing, this goes from 197 to 196 in a span of about 40 feet. It, it drops quite severely. That's why we're going to be putting our catch basin in here and running to a riprap outfall here is because that drops so much. We, you know, we've got a little bit right here. We could put some small plantings in. Uh, we could put some small plantings around the base of his sign to dress that up a little. Uh, you know, right here, if, you know, coming out, you want to be able to see down this way so you, you don't want to cloud it with anything. You could possibly put on the top of the hill a couple of, you know, these small trees like we're going to put out front. But it, you're limited to what you can do because you have very little green space to deal with here. And we try to comply by putting, like I said, matching trees that you have in, in the rest of the town and these little, basically, flower gardens surrounded by bark mulch and bar harbor junipers with um, summer flowers every year, seasonals being planted, which will provide a fair amount of color and whatever. We had looked one time about putting a, a walkway across and painting it green and whatever, but it, it's kind of a safety factor to have a, a walkway in the middle of the driveway. Uh, so this, you know, a couple of plantings here. If we extend, extend this a little more, we might be able to do a couple more low plantings. But again, what we have to be concerned with is traffic leaving and having field division into the roadway. Well, thank you. Other questions? Um, oh, window sorry. boxes, too, if you're putting those. Yeah, yeah. yeah if you're putting those double yep. or those faux double. Well, those, 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 those could also. That would I, know, I know Greg has somebody that's really pretty good with plants and whatever. Uh, we, we could possibly do something. Yeah, you could. It would dress up the building a lot, yeah. what I was thinking. Underneath yeah. these, these windows here. You could. Yeah. People like that. They'll be yep. attractive to come in. Yep. That's true. Flowers. A uh, couple Thank things you. on the, the drawings. It's kind of confusing. C2 is existing proposed plan, and C3 is proposed plan. And there's not much difference between the two. I'm just, I just wanted that title. To existing proposed plan, just as confusing. Well, this is this is the proposed plan. The existing proposed 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 plan is just to show you the scale of what we're doing today compared to what or what we're doing, you know, with the project compared to what is there today, so that you can see this is the existing building. And that's the existing, and then this is the proposed to show you where the addition is going. This is the existing island, and you can see the proposed island in relationship to it. That's, that's why you do that, rather than flipping and saying, okay, this is what it is today, and then flipping to another plan. This way you can look at it and, and virtually see the differences all in one sheet in front of you. All right. And you've got architectural A1 and A3, but you do have an A2 included in this package. The A2 uh, was pulled out. Of the, the A2 is a dimensional plan, and it, it was just pulled out of this package. It's just not listed on here on the title sheet. Then. Now, look, and that's 
what this should be is just a bookkeeping thing, I guess. You just don't have a drawing listed. I have an answer. But I mean, it's not on here. Yeah, oh, it's okay. not listed on the front. Okay. It's just on the list on the front, which is there are two sets of plans. There's another set of architectural. So part of this comes out of the architectural plans and some of the, the site. And when you're all, these will all have title blocks, like right now the, the lighting plan doesn't have title blocks. Right. They'll all, all be, yeah, the lighting all the plan, keeping will be done. Right, the lighting plan came in from my lighting consultant and hasn't been transpired to okay. one of my plans yet. Okay. okay. Other questions? Then let's have a motion for the board to consider and we need to discuss the site. Started that last time, Jack. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Motion for the board to consider be it further ordered that the application be tabled to the regular September 18th, 2007 meeting of the planning board, at which time a public hearing shall be held. No second. All in favor? Okay. Now we need to discuss the site walk. We know that we all know this property really well. However, at least I think we should go with the plans and actually look at where everything is going to be and where the landscaping. That's my opinion, but if nobody else agrees, then. Yeah, I'd like to do that too. And before we do that, I'd like to see a, a redone front facade plan too with, the, with the, either the windows or the full windows added to the plan. The plan. The, yeah. Well, then we have to ask the applicant to submit them early and I'm not is that fair? Well, what? We will make ourselves available to the board. Okay. Uh, well, we have to have the site plan before the next meeting. Right. But I, I'm, as far as asking you to redo that, the, the, the day for submittance for that is when, Maureen? It's uh, next Friday. Oh, okay, because I was going to suggest if everybody's available and the other people, we have a workshop on the you know, the first Tuesday of the month. Right. So was that the we can go right before that, but I don't know if you'll be available. Four. No, it's Maybe the fourth, I think. Fourth. It's the fourth. It's the fourth. Tuesday after Labor Day. Okay, it's the fourth. Yeah, and if you, are you, you're local, Mr. St. Pierre, aren't you? You're not. Well, actually, that, Greg, that, that Greg doesn't, could That be doesn't there. make any difference. I'll be glad to be here to walk it with you. Bangor is local. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'll, I'll be glad to. Yeah, the submission deadline is August 31st for the September 18th meeting. Oh, okay. And your next workshop is September 4th. Yeah. So whatever he's submitting should be in the office yeah. prior to the workshop. Okay, so if we could just bring a copy of, right. a copy of that with right. us on the sidewalk. Right. Is yep. everybody free half an hour early, say, no, on the. An hour. an hour. We better make it an hour. Yeah. So that would be a. Clock. It would be 6 o'clock on the 4th, if that's convenient for everybody. Yep. Now, I would like to ask the board one question. If all possible, we're being tabled to the next board meeting uh, for public hearing. Uh, because of Greg's circumstances and, and help and, and so forth, uh, provided that we make all the changes as we noted here tonight. Would it be possible if everything is satisfactory to the board and with the public hearing that nothing arises out of, you know, context, that we might get site plan approval for that evening as well? Yeah, I mean, if that's, there, if, the you know, if everything is, all the I's are dotted, T's are crossed, and Excellent. public so, doesn't have things, uh, there's no reason why we couldn't approve right. it the next time. Excellent. Now that's not a guarantee we're going to. It's right. simply saying understand. that we can, provided right. that everything Provided that we do what absolutely and, and, and answer all of you know, take care of all your apprehensions yes. and, and so forth. Yes. Yes, there's no reason why. That's all we ask. Yep. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, so four six o'clock on the fourth. We will then meet at Jonesy's just with the with the new plan. And uh, the new front side. Do you require Ron's presence, or, or would I be? No, adequate? we don't. I mean, we don't need to. As long as you can walk us through it, it's fine. Maureen will have plans. I'll make sure Greg has a set of plans. I will bring. Uh, 
It's just so we can see where everything is and we can look at that. So rather than submit the whole set of plans. But it is important end. that if someone is standing there saying, where is this window going to be, that Greg will be able to answer that. Uh, and that's where you need to decide whether you need to have Ron there because. But these will be renewed prior to the walk. Right. right but, these are going to be in Morgan's hands prior to the 31st. I mean, it's typical at a site walk for the board to ask questions about where things are going to be located, and they expect the designer to be able to say it's going to be there or sure. it's going to be here. I, I don't see it as being an issue. I love this part of the state. I'm not saying you have to be there. I'm just saying someone needs right. to be able to answer those questions. I'll be there. Thank you. Well, Thank we'll you. let you and you and, and um, uh, you both decide that question. Right. And if you feel you don't need to be here as long as all our questions can be answered, then it's fine. You don't need to drive down. But that'll be up to you, too. Okay. There's no requirement from us. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, and the last item on the agenda is the Cardinal Lane Private Road approval. Suzanne Gabriel. Good evening. Good evening. My name is John Mitchell, Mitchell and Associates, and I represent Suzanne Gabriel, who is here this evening, uh, for the proposed uh, road extension of, of Cardinal Lane. Uh, just to give the board a, a, a brief background, Cardinal Lane was approved in 2001 as a private access way. Uh, Cardinal Lane is off of uh, Cross Hill Road. Uh, this is Cross Hill Road here. This is Wells Road. And uh, Suzanne's property is located here between Wells and Cross Hill Road with frontages on both. Um, Sue resides on this property. So back in 2001, uh, private access way was approved uh, basically to uh, obtain road frontage for a single family lot that was created and conveyed. Uh, the access way was, was constructed um, and the utilities as well were installed, the underground utilities. And this application or this request is for the extension um, of Cardinal Lane um, which will extend up this property line here to create an additional lot, um, lot three. Uh, the extension is approximately 225 feet um, of Cardinal Lane uh, and a, the turnaround located here, the required uh, hammerhead turnaround. Cardinal Lane has been designed as a private, uh, in accordance with the private road standards. Um, it has a 50 foot wide right of way. Uh, the road width is 22 feet wide uh, with two foot wide grass shoulders. And as, as I mentioned, the required uh, hammerhead turnaround. Um, there are a few items that. Um, Pertaining to the initial construction of Cardinal Way, uh, the private access way, that we have identified uh, that need to be upgraded to a private road, uh, to private road standards. One is to install granite curbing at the entrances, which we're showing uh, here, uh, slope granite curbing. And the other item is to uh, regrade this section of 
of uh, Cardinal Lane to install a crown, a road crown, uh, so that the road pitches to either side. Um, there are also a couple items that, that we would like to discuss with the board uh, for possible waivers. Uh, the first is the intersection slope uh, at this location here. The, the private road standards require a 3% grade at the intersection for a distance of 50 feet. Um, it was designed at 3%, however, um, it appears that it was constructed at 4%. And this needs, to, I, I'm going to confirm this by a surveyor, um, but uh, this section of roadway is paved, and uh, we would request, if it is 4%, we would request a waiver on that. Um, the second item is the open drainage system versus a closed drainage system. Uh, I believe the private road standards require a closed drainage system, uh, that is, catch basins, storm drain pipes. Um, we are proposing a open drainage system, uh, open drainage swales, culverts, sheet flow. Uh, we have included in your packet a letter from Les Berry of BH2M Engineers uh, that addresses the open drainage stormwater system. Les was also the design engineer for Cross Hill subdivision and in, his, in this letter um, he indicates that when he designed Cross Hill he took into consideration the Gabriel property. Um, he modeled the Gabriel property and designed the storm drain system the structures, the culverts, the catch basins, uh, to accommodate the flow from the Gabriel property. Um, and there isn't a lot of flow. The high point of the Gabriel property is located right here. So it's only that portion that flows towards Cross Hill. The balance of it flows um, away from Cross Hill. So we are asking for a, a waiver uh, to allow us to put, to make, to keep the, the drainage swales on either side of the roadway and to sheet flow the drainage uh, over land rather than to collect it in catch basins and direct it um, in pipes. Um, we have received Steve Harding's letter and uh, we have essentially we've addressed all of his comments. Um, We've revised the plans and, and all of his comments will be addressed in our next submission to the board. Um, and finally, the completeness checklist. Um, there is only one item in, uh, that is a partial, and that is the surface drainage stormwater management plan. Um, and I, and I assume that it's because of that closed drainage system versus the open drainage system. I, I assume that that's why the partial is indicated there. Um, so we would like to discuss that with the board as well as have some conversations with uh, Bob Malley about that. Thank you. Um, any questions from the board before we discuss completeness? All right, so do we have a motion on completeness? Um, it seems that those items would be beyond completeness. Well, Maureen, can I ask you your opinion on um, the partial notes on the checklist? I, I think there's plenty of opportunity for the board to deal with the issue, even though, I mean, it's, it is more, it is kind of covered by the applicant as a waiver. So certainly you could deem it complete and still discuss the whole thing, open swales versus a closed system as part of your substantive review. When addressing the substantive issues for the waivers. Okay. Thank Did you repeat that, Maureen? I really couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. I think there's plenty of room there for the board to consider that as a waiver request by the applicant. 
and you can still discuss whether or not you want to have the open swales versus the closed system as part of the substantive review of the application. Shall I make a motion the board to consider then? Uh, we had ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented that the application of Suzanne Gabriel for private road approval for Cardinal Lane, a previously approved private access way located off Cross Hill Road, to create frontage for a new lot three be deemed complete. Second. All in favor? <clears throat> okay. Now beyond, uh, before we talk about public hearing and, and sidewalk, are there any things that we need to discuss in terms of the drainage and the three, of course you're not yet sure whether it's really three or four percent, right. and I'd like to know the ramifications of one versus the other. Not that much, it's, okay. It's, okay. It's, it's very minor. <laughs> because I mean if it's not that much, then it seems ridiculous to have a whole yeah expensive project then placed on the the applicants so and it's already paved that it's, already, it's paved. already paved yeah. and it's it's very oh. insignificant you'll I, I don't have any problem with it you'll, you'll see it during your site visit okay that's fine yeah. and what about the drainage so we just um, do you want to discuss it some more or do you want perhaps my take on the letter and, and what the gentleman said is the part that actually drains over that part is not very much because it's near a high right point. Mm -hmm. Yes, but if I could. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this applicant has, I think, very responsibly laid out um, a road right of way so that as she chooses to develop her property, it can be laid out in a very logical manner, and that's to her credit. Um, but if you look down the road, no pun intended, you know, the expectation is that over time there will be homes on this road. Right. And, you know, the, the struggle the town had. A decade ago, and more, because I've been here a long time now, is that applicants would often choose, would often originally propose a private road. And that would mean they could exclude, or evade, or design a lesser quality road. The, bot, the problem with that was that, you know, the applicants leaving town, the developers leaving town, the new property owners have, have put in their new doorbells, and the first thing they do is they start petitioning the council to accept the road because who wants to pay for plowing and, and upkeep when it's a perfectly nice road up there? And then at that point, you've got this struggle with, well, they have to meet the standards, but you know, how much do you want to impose upon these people to bear those costs? And so what happened was is, is that the town subdivision ordinance was revised, so there's very little in it that gives you a benefit for creating a private road. Um, you don't have to pave the road. And the expectation is that if property owners petition the town to take over a private road and the cost that they had to assume was paving it, that was within their expectation of what they should take on. Drainage on, however, means you have to dig the road up and, and install this kind of, of piping. And I would strongly urge the planning board to think long and hard before we depart dramatically. And I'm not talking about 1% of, of grade here. Right. But no. if you depart dramatically from the road standards, you're, you're going in a direction where you may start seeing more private roads being uh, proposed because there's a real savings in building them. And then you are going to be having property owners shortly thereafter petitioning the council to accept those roads. Um, and you certainly could ask the public works director about he has very strong feelings about closed versus open drainage systems. The, the big problem with the swales is that um, people are very proud of their homes. They like their yards to look really nice, and they have these big dips just before it hits the road, and so there's this natural inclination to fill them in, which means that the drainage doesn't work well anymore. So we have parts of town where that style of design is really considered old style. Um, and that the closed drainage system is the way we build roads now. I'll leave it. So do we deal with that here or wait for the... Okay. Well, why don't we request, John, that you have a discussion with Bob Nelly yeah. and 
the applicant, um, Ms. Gabriel, and see if there is in some kind of a, a solution that could be, you know, to that. And as far as the one, four versus three percent, it sounds like we'd all be willing to grant that waiver. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. The open swales, though, you know, it's, I live in, we live in a neighborhood where the drainage is that, and it's inviting it's for different kinds of things like invasive plants. You know, purple loosestrife has started growing in the swales where we are now. So I, I, I agree with Maureen. I'd like you to look further into that and consider. Um, and we can look at it. We need to look at it when we come on the sidewalks. Yeah, true. Is there anything else um, before we make the rest of the motion and schedule a sidewalk? Do we have a motion for the board to consider? I'll um, move that the application be tabled to the regular September 18th, 2007 meeting of the Planning Board, at which time a public hearing will be held. Second. All in favor? Now let's talk about a sidewalk. We can't do them all in one night, can we? Why not? Does everybody want to do it in one night? Sure. Five and six and then seven? How the, big is our agenda? We're in the mode. Not the, okay. I mean, we don't want to go for seven. I would think we'd want it, we, we want some transit time and, I don't know, 4.30 or 5 if we're going to do it that Maybe same we night. we can do it five. Oh, yes, and I guess each one is going to be 45 minutes. We'll just okay. make ourselves do it quick. Yeah. At the most on this one. It's more like half an hour probably. Yeah, I would almost, yeah. I would almost It'll be pretty straightforward say 5.30 and then you can, you can use part of your transit time to go over to Jonesy, yeah. so that that's a 45 minute if you want. Yeah. 5.30 is more realistic for me to make it. I know. Okay. Why don't we say 5.30 and then maybe we can call Jonesy and make his... 6.15. No, it still be 6. 6.15 or still 6. Well, this shouldn't take very long to look at. It's no. just a... It's a very small area we're going to look at. Okay. Does that work for you, John? Or... Yeah, or the date on that again? It's uh, the 4th. 4th, 4th of September at 5.30. Okay. I'll do my best to be there. That's my fir first day of classes that day, so. Um, That's first cl day of classes? For the college, yeah, so as long as I get students out of my office, oh. I'll be there. Can you send us an email? Yes, I'm doing that. And Thank that's you. 77 Wells Road. Wells Road. Right. So it only takes maybe th two minutes. Well, yeah. not, not Wells Road. We should be at Cross Hill, off Cross Hill Road, at Cotton. Yeah, it's pretty right. much the midpoint of Cross Hill Road. Right. What do you mean the midpoint of I thought it's right off. It's not off Wells? No. Well, Su you Suzanne, take, the, Mrs. Gabriel Wells lives in Wells Road. Cross, cross Hill, and you drive to the middle of Cross Hill. Okay. All right. Would you send that in the email, the yes. directions? <laughs> yeah, please. Thank you very much. Okay. It, does that work for you? I just said it was, the, it's, it's basically the midpoint of Cross Hill. Okay. Yeah. 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 So it's Cross Hill Road. Just stand there with a flag. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> okay, well, we'll get directions. Okay. We'll we, we're pretty good at following directions. <laughs> right. Give us some Thankfully, we are. Thank you very much. Good. Thank okay. you, John. All right. We will see you on the 4th, then. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Ready? I just, um, I just got an email this afternoon from the city of South Portland. Mm -hmm. They have, uh, I think the board remembers that you had made an agreement that when there were projects that were on the common boundary that you would try to have a joint workshop on those. Yep. They have a 42 unit condominium project known as Grandview Phase 5 that is on the common boundary in South Portland and have suggested three potential workshop dates, August 30th, which is um, Thursday. Thank you. Uh, September 6th, which is a Thursday, and September 13th. So those are all Thursday evenings. Um, do you want to try to schedule that now? The 6th and the 13th are great for me. The 30th, I have to be on campus through the evening. So the I won't be here on the 30th. So the 30th is out. So you want to go with. 13th. 13th. I think instead of two things that I have. think the 13th that is yeah. good. 13th. 13th. Okay. okay. So what time would that be? Seven? Uh, I will find out and I will include it in an email to you. And I will Thank also email the members that are not here. I'm hoping at 7 p.m. 
and I'll try to have a location for you as well. Okay. Thank you. Grandview, so that must be off Highland, right? The, yeah, the entrance to it in the South Portland, of, yeah, all that land back there. Land left there. Okay. Yeah. What did uh, the board conclude at the workshop about PDF? Uh, we're going to try it on a trial basis starting next month. Okay, good. Did you happen to see the article in the Century by the gentleman that was, was here? He wrote that. I was in the paper like the next couple of days. He was uh, Highland County. So okay. I think it makes it easier for the newspaper guys to. Yeah, he was he was in favor of it. Being it's a non-techie, yeah. <laughs> I'm not thrilled, but that's okay. <laughs> Shall I move to adjourn? Second. Second. All in favor. Okay. <laughs> I have a plan for you. Sign up for you. Good. You do have oh. a plan? Okay. Yes. Yeah.